Hey guys, it's registered dietitian Kara Corey here for another episode of Dietitian Talk. Um, I've been getting a lot of questions on my YouTube and Instagram. A lot of people leave me comments saying this is my height, my weight, my current macros, what am I doing wrong or tell me what to do. And it's very hard for me to guide someone with such little information. Um, so I tend to not answer those questions if you're wondering why I don't respond to them. Um, it's such a little snapshot of what's going on in your life. I can't really respond. So I wanted to do a video very briefly giving you general tips, my top tips for helping to perfect your diet or maybe you're just starting out and you're kind of not sure where to start. Here are my tips to kind of help get you going. So the first thing I would suggest and do suggest when I work with people is first start out by actively tracking, whether it's in just a notebook or in an app on your smartphone such as MyFitnessPal, and start tracking what you're currently consuming. And I suggest to people at this point in time, don't change anything you're doing. Even if you know you've been eating horrible, keep eating how you normally eat and start tracking for at least anywhere from three days upwards to a week. And I know when people get motivated, they're like super, they just want to go and get started. Um, I urge you to start by finding out what you're currently doing. You'll be very, very surprised. Most people, including myself, um, we underestimate how much we're truly eating and we underestimate the portion sizes and in our head we just don't realize how quickly these calories can add up and I've realized it myself when I've taken you know I don't always track every day of my life I currently do for prep but prior to doing so I would start tracking in my fitness pal and be amazed at how how I was truly eating if I didn't make any changes to what I was doing and I just ate intuitively I mean holy crap for being such a petite wee person I can eat a hell of a lot so you will be surprised um, at how much you're really actually eating so that's the first step start and see what you're currently doing the next step I recommend is then start taking a look at how your weight has been start kind of seeing if there's been any trends in your weight so this does require you stepping on the scale and you don't have to do so obsessively with getting on the scale every day um, but more or less getting an idea of with your current intake are you gaining weight are you losing weight or are you maintaining this is the best way possible for you to get an idea of where your current metabolism is at and how your body is responding you know a lot of people ask me what macro should I be on and it's not that simple um, it can be difficult to figure out and I really do think this is the best way to kind of figure out what your body is doing um, so try that out and see how your weight is going and you can't just judge by a couple days you would kind of need to know over a certain time frame what your weight's doing if you're you know on average consuming 2,000 calories and you're gaining weight then um, then you know you got to start kind of moving things down a little bit or are you eating 1800 and your weight staying the same okay good information so just use that to kind of see where you're at and how your body responds and the third thing I would say is then find some type of tool. You could do um, the American Dietetic Association. We have this equation we use, Mifflin St. Jor. Even that's not a perfect science. You could easily use some of these online calculators. And what I recommend you do is go online, find what seems to be a good one. Um, you can go on eatright.org and get that information. And what you want to do is compare based on your gender, your weight, your age, and your activity level and your height to basically kind of the standard. Um, and why might you do this? Um, I think it's good practice to get an idea of what that kind of standard is that you'll find online compared to what you've been noticing with your weight. You know, I might plug something in and maybe it tells me that, you know, I could eat 2,000 calories to maintain but I know that I've been eating 1600 and I'm gaining weight. So what's going on? What's wrong with me? There's nothing wrong with you. Again, these are just reference points to take a look at and give you an idea of maybe where your basal metabolic rate is. Now remember, metabolism can be highly adaptive. So 
your metabolism, as you know, when you're 16 is not going to be the same when you're 32. And depending on what stage of life you're in, um, depending on life stressors and other events and what your sleep patterns are and what medications you're taking, there's all these other things out in the world that impact your metabolism and what's going on. So it's never just like a steady flow. It's never like, I will always be able to eat 1,800 calories and maintain, and if I can do this now, I should be able to do it 10 years from now. It's never like that. It's never like that, so you need to understand that and just kind of get an idea of where you're at right now. Now that you have an idea of where your metabolic rate lies, and then that's the point in time when you need to figure out what your focus is in terms of your goals. That's going to be a little bit different for everyone. So maybe you're looking to gain muscle, maybe you're someone that needs to gain weight, maybe you're looking to lose weight, or maybe you do just want to maintain. So depending on what which route you're going, you need to basically tweak your plan based on that. My next tip that I want that I want to suggest though, no matter what direction you're going with your goals, is do not go to the extreme. So many of us are all or nothing. I can be guilty of it myself as well. You know, once you've got your heart set on a goal and you're motivated at that point in time, you want to do whatever it takes and you want to do all of it all at once. And I, I really recommend you don't do that. Um, you know, especially with the crash diets that people go on, the this very restricted fad diets. Um, you guys have probably watched some of my other fad diet video talks. But in general, I just caution people, especially those that want to lose weight, with going on these severe, severe calorie restricted diets. Um, you really don't, you want to be able to, you want to have a moderate calorie deficit when losing weight, but you have to remember when you go to extreme calorie restriction, you're going to be impacting your metabolism your metabolism to some degree starts to slow down anytime your body's in a calorie deficit for days at a time. Your body is going to adjust and adapt and essentially that is going to start slowing things down. So if you're looking to make a lifestyle change and do something that's maintainable, you really don't want to be cutting calories too severe. Um, there's several reasons why. Number one, I just said it's not maintainable. Uh, number two, there are so many different hormonal things going on in your body that will definitely be impacted by a calorie reduction if you're doing it, an extreme calorie reduction for an extended period of time. Um, you know, the, in general, if you know what your maintenance calories are, that's why it's good to figure it out. You really want to be, you don't want to go much lower than 70% of your maintenance calories. So if you can kind of get to that 70% point and you're slowly losing weight, then, then you're in a good place. But so many of us are so quick to want to do it all and see results in a week that will go to the, the severe degree to go on less than a thousand calorie diets and endless amounts of cardio. And I just urge you to kind of think about what your long-term goal is and the best way to get yourself there. Because when you think about, or if you know any yo-yo dieters who go on and off these diets, they tend to gain it back, and as you know, they tend to gain back more than when they originally started. So I definitely cautious you on, I caution you on going to the extreme. You know, think about your long-term goal, maybe write down some of the steps that you think it's gonna take to get there. You know, you need to change your diet, you need to change your workouts, you need to change your sleep, maybe you need to cut back on how many cigarettes you're smoking, I don't know. But you don't need to do it all at once. So just start with one small thing at a time. That leads me to my next point, which I think all of us need to hear sometimes. Make sure you're realistic and patient. And I know I'm guilty of this myself, especially during competition prep where you are on a deadline where you, you know, need to be at a certain point in time. But just try to be patient. The human body will work against you when you're making these multiple changes to your diet. Um, your exercise, your lifestyle habits, you know, it's like you want to be, you do everything right one day and you just, you feel like you should be skinny the next day or you feel like the scale should reflect all the hard work that you did in one day. It doesn't work like that. I wish it did. Shit, that'd make life super simple, right? Like we wouldn't have an obesity issue, but it's not like that. You must be patient 
and it can be really hard to be patient, especially when you know you're working hard, you know you're doing everything right, you know you've made so many sacrifices, and you know, if you're not seeing that quick change on the scale or the way your clothes fit or in your progress pictures, it can be very frustrating. And sometimes that's where I do suggest that a coach is very helpful. Um, or even just having a support team. You know, if you have family members or friends or your your loved ones that support you in that process, have them help you keep in check. You know, like when I'm having days like that, I reach out to my husband or I reach out to my sister or I reach out to my friends that I know like can kind of put me back into like perspective on the bigger picture and that I am working hard and that I do need to be patient. And I think we all need that reminder when we're making lifestyle changes. So, you know, in terms of perfecting your diet, maybe you don't need to do anything else right now, but keep being consistent and keep doing what you've been doing because you're on the right path and trust that path and keep going. And eventually the results will get there, you know, especially in terms of, of weight loss and even gaining muscle. A lot of times we have this quick drop of weight when we first begin a weight loss plan or say you just begin lifting, you quickly gain some lean mass. No matter what direction you're going, that tends to kind of taper off and it gets a little bit harder and a little bit harder to see those big drops in your weight or the gain in muscle. You know, there's always that kind of point, there's going to be that point where it gets a little bit challenging and difficult and things slow down, you know. The smaller you become, the more weight you lose, the, the less calories your body requires. So you have to keep adapting and keep adjusting, and you just need to be patient with that process and be realistic with yourself. And I'd like to say with that too, something that I need to give myself for my own advice is don't be so hard on yourself. You know, if you know you're doing what you need to do, um, give yourself some credit, give your, yourself some appreciation for what you're doing, reward yourself in, in some way or another, and you know, just keep pushing forward. So those are my tips for you guys on how to perfect your diet or maybe become more successful with starting um, your, your plan of action. So I hope you guys found this video helpful. Don't forget to please give this a thumbs up and share it with others. Please subscribe if you don't already and keep checking back for more. Now you can see here, this is from my last year of bikini comps. This was 2013. This was my Buffalo competition. So hopefully you can see a little change in, well, my posing. Yeah, I know I'm bending over a little too much there, but in my body and my actual um, look that I brought to the stage, I really can see a difference. And I, for me, Buffalo was probably the best look I brought. It wasn't the leanest that I brought, but I like how full I look. This is like